forward on this computer. All right. So, Chad, um, we are bringing another Fitness Friday to everybody. And today we're talking about travel and exercise. Why are we talking about travel and exercise? Why is, it, why is that a, a thing? Mostly just because we're coming up to the time of year when people are more likely to be traveling. Although, you know, with COVID, we'll kind of see that might be a little bit different this year. But it, it, there's more expectation for travel, visiting family, family visiting you. Um, it's a time of year when we all get out of routine to some extent. So yeah. it's just an, it's a important time to bring up the subject. Yeah. And, and I know for me, like when I go visit family, when I go on vacation, like my wife gets ticked off at me because the first thing I look at in the hotel is the hotel gym. Like I'm like, okay, <laughs> what does the hotel gym look like? Do I need to go get a gym membership? For a week or or like can I use the hotel gym or if I'm going to visit family um, like I they know like I call ahead I'm like hey can you go to such and such gym and get me a week pass at such and such gym so I can go work out because for me it's just more about staying on schedule staying on routine it's a spiritual thing it's a psychological thing um, you know if I know I'm gonna have cake one night I like to be able to go to the gym the next day and and try to burn some of that off um, so for me, it's it's more of that. Um, but there's also people out there with goals and things that are important yeah. to them that they want to make sure that a vacation doesn't completely derail them. And so they want to continue to exercise um, during their travel and things like that. So um, you wrote a blog all about this. It's on our page. I'll include the link in the comment section. Really, really in-depth, good blog. But there's kind of four main topics that we're just, I want like highlight cliff note, talk about real quick. Um, if, if you guys want to know more, if you want to actually get the, the meat and potatoes of it, go to the blog, check it out. But the first one was like, what, what if I have, what if I'm going on vacation? I didn't plan ahead. There is no gym. There's no gym at the hotel. Um, and I don't have access to any equipment. What, what, what's something I can do? What should I do with that? There's always body weight exercises, calisthenics. Uh, I would see if there's like a local park close to where you're going to be, where you can, you know, in the blog I talked about either go for a jog or find some, uh, you know, like playground equipment that'll double as like a pull-up bar if you can yeah. do pull-ups. Yeah. Um, Sometimes and, you scare uh, the kids when you do that, but yeah. Hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh so that's one option, you know, just either going out for a, a light jog someplace, finding some place where you can do some push-ups and some uh, maybe some body weight squats and some pull-ups, um, setting up some kind of, in the bog I talk about, you can set up some kind of circuit, um, potentially, um, if you don't have any equipment or access to anything. I don't really like people working out in their hotel rooms, um, just because I feel like, you know, when you're traveling, or even like in your bedroom, if you're staying at somebody's house, um, you just, you know, that, that should be an area where like you focus on, like get, as far as like getting good quality sleep, you should be focused on that area should be dedicated towards like rest, not activity yeah. and stress. So. To separate those two things. You have, you have your stressors and your, your de-stressors, right? So yeah. um, environment has a lot to do with that. But the, the next part we come into is hotel gyms, inadequate hotel gyms. Cause I've been in hotel gyms that like, put my local gym to shame and then i've been in hotel gyms that have a treadmill and a yoga ball and that's that's it <laughs> so talk to me a little bit about how i can make a hotel gym work for me regardless of what i'm doing if they have some dumbbells that makes it a lot easier because even with just a pair of dumbbells you can set up a decent circuit and get some blood flow yeah um you know, you know, I remember you talking about during COVID how when you were stuck at the apartment for a while, yeah, you just did body weight stuff, but um, and a lot of reps. But you, you can find a way to make it work. But setting up a setting up a circuit where you're pairing like lower body exercises and upper body exercises, and you're getting some blood through through your whole body, uh, to where at least you're moving and not just having a completely sedentary day. Yeah, um, you know, and there's I, I give a little bit of structure in the blog about. One way you can set that up is a lot of things you can do depending on what you find, but 
Uh, you might be able to take some bands or something with you to kind of supplement. I'm not crazy about bands, but again, they're probably better than nothing. Yeah. Um, so. So there's some ways like, so you, you brought up what I did during COVID um, and, and some of the strategies um, that you helped me with are pretty cool. So like, what if, what if I'm just doing body weight or what if I just have a 15 pound dumbbell and, and it's obviously not enough weight to really challenge me. What, what are some principles or some things that I can do with that 15 pound dumbbell or with that body weight to make that exercise harder, recruit, recruit more muscle tissue, um, make that a more difficult exercise? Is it just doing more reps or are there some other things that I can do with that? You can do quarter reps. You can do half reps. Um, you can do uh, partial ranges of motion. Um, and I guess some people don't understand what a quarter rep is. If you're going to do like a goblet squat, as an example, so you're going to hold the dumbbell up to your chest, mm -hmm. uh, go all the way down. And you know I'm big on tempo. So take like four or five, you know, if the weight's not heavy enough, take four or five seconds to lower yourself. Yeah. It'll get challenging, I promise you. <laughs> really quickly. Uh, yeah. Really quickly. Get all the way down to the bottom as far as, you know, whatever your range of motion is. And then go up just a little bit, not much, and then go back down and then go up and count that as one rep. Um, Sometimes it's easier with things like that to do them for time. So I'll set a goal for someone for like 60 seconds with yeah. these continuous goblet squats. Um, and it's still, you know, you can find pretty quickly that'll get challenging. Um, with a 15 pound dumbbell, if someone's got the mobility, uh, they can do an overhead squat, you know, one arm at a time, the same thing. Um, you know, we could list exercises, but just, yeah. Quarter reps and stuff like that can go a long way. Tempo, quarter reps. Um, you, I know you talk about ladders in the blog. Yeah. Things like that, um, that that can really help out. So there's another mentality too. So not everybody's crazy like me um, and needs to work out on their vacation. I know my wife is one of those people that the last thing she thinks about when she's going on vacation is how to work out and, and when to work out and stuff like that. And so – I know when, when somebody's been on a routine, like when we talk about professional athletes or competitors or, or college athletes or somebody that's just really been killing it in the gym, really hitting their goals, really working really hard, is, is, there, a, is there an argument to be made to take that vacation time just completely off? Potentially, depending on goals and everything. And I've told you before, like I've worked – with a lot of professional athletes and there were times, especially with like baseball players in the off season where uh, some of those guys would go on like a hunting trip for a week and it was going to be like a legit out there, you know, no cell phones kind of trip where they were going to be reasonably active. Uh, and we would set their program up to where they needed a break before they did that. Um, okay. You know, so if you know how to, how to taper or how to peak, you can plan things like that. And I've done that with a lot of clients, not just professional athletes, but you know, if you know you're going to be going someplace and exercising just isn't going to be practical uh, for sometimes for family reasons, you know, like we've had clients last year who had like uh, family members who were sick or something. They had yeah. to go see them. Uh, sometimes some people are crazy enough like you to make that work. <laughs> you know, some it. people are just going to make it work, but if you can't make it work and you know that in advance, you can potentially peak. But, but if somebody is just starting out and this is kind of a new journey, that's not a good strategy for them. Okay. Um, they would be better off, you know, if they're not going to be able to do the normal thing, trying to take at least like a one or two days during that trip and at least doing some body weight squats, maybe some band work, just so they're keeping the habit of exercise going. Because one of the things we don't want to see is if someone kind of starting that habit and they're getting it going and then they've got like a week somewhere else. Uh, it's easy to break a habit you're trying to form in a week. Yeah. Um, you know, and so if it hasn't become a lifestyle, that's actually, I would consider that a danger. So I would, in that case, I would really encourage somebody to have some kind of a plan, even if it's super, super simple. Uh, not going to take that long, uh, but just where they're going to set aside 
you know, 15 to 30 minutes and do something that's intentionally exercise uh, just to foster that habit. So that when they get back in town, they're, they can hit the ground running instead of feeling like they're starting over and all that. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something I've encouraged people to do is, is do a, um, even if it's just a blood flow focus or stretching focus or, yeah. you know, some calisthenics or something like that. Just get your body moving, yeah. go through the motions. And that way, when you do get back into the gym um, next week, you're, you're not super sore and out of it. And it takes all that time to kind of get back into it. And then there is that mental habit forming thing that happens too, right? Especially Absolutely. if you're if you're new to exercise, if this is a new thing for you, or maybe you're, you got out of it and now you're getting back into it and you're trying to rebuild some habits, um, you know, yeah, taking that week off can be detrimental to actually setting up some long-term success and long-term goals. Especially if you're taking more than one trip during the holidays. Yeah. And a lot of people do. Um, yeah. I know we have clients that it seems like every weekend they're off doing something, right? And right. Um, you know, if every weekend they're taking or every other weekend, they're taking a three, four day weekend and that's three or four days where they're not on their nutrition plan. They're not doing any form of exercise or anything like that. That can really ruin that month pretty quickly when that's two or three weeks out of a month. Right. Yeah. So, um, it goes back to what we've said before that the holiday break isn't <laughs> the entire month of December. It's you know, Christmas day and maybe like the day after Christmas and then get back on it. Right. Yeah. It shouldn't be a, and I've, we've talked about that before, but I mean, I've known a lot of people that even like in October, they'll kind of shut down. Yeah. Um, October or November, somewhere in there, they'll just kind of give up or quit and decide they're going to set new year's goals. Um, that's one of the big reasons why I, I hate new year's resolutions. But I've just seen that so many, I've been in so many gyms in the last 20 years. I've seen that so much. It's, it doesn't help anyone. Yeah. Um, well, we know that, that I'm going through my 90 day challenge right now. I'm, I'm on right. day 23 and, and I specifically set it up to go through the holiday season because I know we both believe and, and we're, we're kind of advertising this by, by saying, you know, Hey, this is how you work out on the holidays and travel. But we both believe like, just because you're you're trying to get fit, you're trying to get lean, you're trying to get in shape, you have goals, doesn't mean you can't live your life at the same time. Absolutely, yeah. Right? Like, you, you should still be able to go do the things and have the fun and, and you know, participate in, in everything that you want to participate in and be able to look and feel the way you want to look and feel, right? Absolutely. Right? That, so, that's, one of those, that's one of those areas where that 10% rule comes into that we talk about with clients a lot about eating. Mm -hmm. You know, where you, if you're doing everything you're supposed to do, it actually gives you more leeway to enjoy some of the things that aren't uh, stereotypically healthy. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a uh, bad mentality that people get into in the fitness world specifically that it's, it's an all or nothing, right. right? Like, and that's why people shut down in October and November is it's like, well, I can't do it perfectly. So I'm not going to do it at all. Absolutely. And that's right? So and I, and I look at it and I'm like, you weren't doing it perfectly for the past four months either, but you still tried. <laughs> like, so, but that's just me. Um, but, you know, just because you can't do something, especially with fitness, 100%, maybe you can do it 80% correctly or, or whatever, doesn't mean there's no value in that 80% doing it correctly, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, that I've been joking recently about how little things add up. It's true with donuts and it's true with good habits. It's, it's, you know, so, I mean, 80% is awesome. Um, it's, uh, and when you look at that cumulatively over a period of years, I mean, it, it, it makes a really big difference. I mean, even, I don't want to get egotistical, but when I look at myself versus a lot of other males my age, mm -hmm. even though, you know, like right now I'm not in the best shape I've ever been in by any means, I can still do a full squat. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and a lot of guys my age can't. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, and even guys much younger, you know, guys your age, they can't do just a full squat without using their arms and crap like that. So, you know, even yeah. if you're not, it's very rarely going to be ideal. It's not going to be perfect unless you're getting ready for a show and 
you either have a three, extremely understanding family or you're single. Yeah. Um, you know, so. Well, and, and that's the, that's the other thing that I don't think everybody really understands is, is we coach this for health reasons. You know, it's yeah. not always to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger or, or to get stage ready. It's, right. are you, are you healthy? Like, can you do the things that you want to do? Are you off all the medications that you don't really need to be on in the first place? Cause you're, you're putting crap in your body and, and you're not taking care of yourself and all this kind of stuff. So you're taking all those meds and, and like, you know, you can't get on the ground and, and play with your kids or your grandkids or where, whatever stage of life you're at, yeah. um, you know, and, and you can't do these things. And that's what we really coach people for is that, that Ooh. big life change, that health change. And then, yeah, like if the next step for you is to get contest ready or, or Arnold Schwarzenegger looking sure. or, you know, yeah. that's awesome. You know, we'll take you there too. But that first step is just, hey, let's get healthy. Let's get to a point where we feel strong. We feel independent. We feel healthy. We feel energetic, vibrant, all those areas. And I think, you know, that's something people, I've just seen over the years, like a, when a lot of people come to this subject, it's often because they're frustrated with how they feel or look, or, you know, they wake up and look in the mirror and have kind of a panic attack, but they don't, they, they kind of don't realize how much it affects their independence. Uh, I've had so many clients tell me how happy they were that they were able to just go to the, this sounds, might sound silly to some of y'all, but to go to the grocery store and get all their stuff and take it out to the car by themselves and unload it without needing any help. Um, you know, and, and same thing when they get home. I mean, it's just those little things add up. Definitely, man. All right. Well, I, I think we sufficiently went off track there um, <laughs> and completely derailed the conversation about <laughs> exercise and, and travel. Uh, but I think we gave some good advice, some good tips there. Um, as always, guys, check out the link below this video. Um, it'll take you right to our blog. You can read all of Chad's wise words of wisdom about exercise and travel and how, how you can make it work. Um, and if you want to know some, some, if you have some personal things that maybe aren't as general as the blog are, and you want to know a little bit more, feel free to message us, reach out, email us, however you feel most comfortable in, in reaching us. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Um, Chad, do you have anything else you wanted to throw in there before we head out here? Just keep at it. Don't give up. All right, guys. We will talk to you later. Adios. Bye. Have a good one.